Uh, here is a new arrival, uh, and that's the uh, facet calculator, uh, which is actually a, a modified sharp calculator. And somewhere there it has a switch. There you go. And the reason I bought it is because it has a nice um, uh, display with Nixie tubes. works actually quite well. Plus two equals, there you go. And it has a, a memory so you can use it as a uh, as, as a commercial calculator. We should put it in two decimals, there you go. There you go and you have the total. And it has some constants too. You can uh, multiply by constant. I'm not that good at it. I think you do this, then you somehow put it in memory. No, that's not it. Anyhow, and uh, there are only a few things that don't work. I think it's supposed to show a light over here uh, when the transaction is in progress. So the computation is in, in depending on, on uh, multiply or divide, and that's not working. So I suppose the lights burn out. Except from that, it's a uh, Nicely functioning calculator. Actually, the inside is quite pretty, and it's. Uh, let me turn it on so you see the tubes. Ugh, I hope I won't electrocute myself. And a few discrete transistors, but I think the board underneath uh, is uh, LSI logic, so it's a weird combination of old Nixie tubes and uh, rather new. Uh, LSI integration, it's on the board underneath, you can see it. And here's the keyboard, that's really uh, nicely done. You can smell the higher end, uh, more expensive calculator, that's the power supply. So here's the keyboard, it detaches neatly, it has a little PCB connector. And uh, I could uh, clean it, so it's uh, so interestingly. There's the mysterious 5-4 key. I couldn't figure what that one could do. So if anyone knows, please tell me. It doesn't seem to have much of an effect on anything. Well, I'll, I'll be darned. Here's the key, or the multiplication key, and it was its springs. And you can clearly see it has some red translucent plastic in it. So it was made to be illuminated. But this particular unit doesn't seem to have a lamp for it. So just to uh, make sure I'm not making it up, here's the key that was supposed to be illuminated and that's the key from just beneath it. And you can see it doesn't have the translucent plastic. This one does. And you look at the socket, this one has no hole for a lamp. This one has a big hole, but no lamp no socket for it so I guess that was a, a suppressed feature in that calculator oh darn so while I have it open uh, a few uh, commands on the keyboard so those are uh, little magnets that you see here so these are actuated by read switches you can hear them tick well I can hear them and here on the uh, Numerical keyboard is a really nice feature. There's an uh, interlock for the keys. So here I press a key at a time. You can see it moving in the middle. So here's one key, here's another key, but I cannot press them at the same time. The interlocks blocks it. So you can never type two keys at the same time. That works. That works, but I can't do that. They're locked. That's pretty clever. So I, I think I finally figured out how to use that uh, constant multiply or uh, constant divide function. It's a little bit unobvious. You have to first put it in memory add mode. Put your constant, we'll do three. Put it in memory, so it's in memory, there's a little i. And then you actually have to recall it. Now I can clear it, I think. Be back in normal mode, go into divide, 
and let's see if that works. It does. So now I divide everything by thirds. And the funny thing is that you can see the calculation progressing. It goes boop, 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 boop. So I'm dividing by three every time. Uh, and then if you leave it in uh, the sum mode, then you, you can do things like uh, add taxes. Let's, let's do it, for example. Um, let's put in the future California sales tax. Sale tax, 20%. That sounds about right. Uh, so same thing, put in add mode. Put in as a constant. Recall it. Clear the memory, put it in multiplication, and now I buy an item at $10, which uh, got uh, to 12 for the governor of California, $20, $24, $45, yep. and now I can recall the total, and this is how much I owe. Uh, so it seems to work fine. So a few parting words on uh, the calculator. Uh, it has uh, some neat ways in showing overflows that I, I wanted to uh, show you. So let's say, for example, I'll try to divide 3 by 0. And it gets me all these little dots, and it's unhappy, and it has this... Uh, error character, the memory character. Oh no, that's probably because I had it in memory. Um, also, if you put too many numbers, at one point it gets annoyed. <laughs> it shows this series of dots and numbers. And also, if you put too many of them after the decimal, it gets unhappy. Uh, and there's still the mystery 5-4 key, 5 uh, fourths or whatever that is, that uh, I have no clue what it does. So please let me know if you find out. Okay, so the 5-4 key mystery has been solved, but before I go there, I um, just uh, forgot to say what this calculator is. It's an 1131J. Uh, which also explains uh, why it has that weird combination of Nixie tube with um, LSI uh, circuits, because there was a version of this with Nixie tubes and uh, you know, transistors and uh, low-level integration and logic, just the uh, 74 series. And uh, th this one is just uh, has been the electronic has been improved and there and but the display is still the same and there is a version after that one that has this electronics but a VFD display. Uh, so that makes uh, sense in the evolution of engineering. Uh, and now for the mysterious uh, five four that's the rounding key. To explain that, uh, it was hard I think, to make it work. So I am in, in three decimals. And if I divide this number carefully, it was a number by three. Darn it. Let's do it again the correct way. Equal the number, divide by three. It's going to give me 1.555. Now, if I go to two decimals, uh, we'll see the rounding in effect. Um, so the five is either going to round be cut off or be rounded up and cut off, depending on the position of the button. So get that number. So curiously, I enter that number with three decimals, and I'm in two decimals, and it gives it back to me in three decimals again. So that's convenient, because I can divide it by, darn it, do it wrong again, divide by three, and with that key up, it gives me 1.55, and actually it's, uh, the decimal is really lost. If I multiply this one by 10, it has uh, completely uh, lost uh, the uh, next number. And I type minus instead of plus, so it gave me a negative number. 
Now if I push that key and I do the same operation, this number divided by 3 and now it has rounded it up uh, the correct way However, if I multiply it by 10, I have lost the decimals afterwards. So it has do a round and cut off. Um, so it's not just a rounding on screen. However, uh, when I was experimenting to see if it could keep the uh, decimal numbers in calculation, it actually does in some cases. So if I take my number divided by 3 and multiply it to see that no, I, as soon as I press second multiply it kept the six decimals in and it only will round it up at the uh, last stage of the calculation so in, in until you press an equal sign it will actually keep the uh, all the digits after the decimals.